Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner's Code. Today we will be looking further at creating our own objects and how we can incorporate our own way of keeping track of how many times our class has been instantiated. Okay, so the first thing that we're actually going to have a little look at is just trying to learn or use what we learned in um, video one or part one and we're going to try and create our own classes and these two classes will both interact with each other. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a swimmer class and the swimmer class will represent a person and then we'll have a results class and the results class will represent the positions of where the swimmers came. And it's only going to be very brief. We're not actually going to label each uh, position and like who came where and everything like that. We're just going to focus on the time and the amount of swimmers we have. So to start with, we'll create a class. So class swimmer. And as I said, this will represent each person. So each person that actually took part in the race. So we now want to create a um, in constructor method. So underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. And then we'll pass in the self parameter. So there are a couple more parameters that we need. Uh, one is definitely name, one is age, and one is time. So self, name, age, and time. And then inside of this um, initializing method, we can then use the self.name. So self.name is equal to name, self.age is equal to age, and self.time is equal to time. Okay, so now we have our initializer method. So once this, um, once we've actually instantiated this swimmer object, we will now create a method inside of this class. And this method will basically just return the time. So that's all we need to do, just return the time. So we'll create a method. So get underscore time, pass in the self parameter. So this is just a getter that will be retrieving a attribute or a um, parameter that was passed in when the initializing constructor method has been instantiated or the class has been instantiated. Um, so we are just going to return self.time. Okay, so this is our first method and this is the swimmer. Next, we want to create the results. So class results, and then we need to create another um, initializing method. So def underscore underscore init. And then this will take in th three parameters. So we need the self parameter, and then we need the race parameter. So that will just be a name. And then we need the max underscore swimmers. So now we can do self dot race is equal to race and then self dot max underscore swimmers is equal to max underscore swimmers and now we want to add a third initializing method and what this will basically do is whenever we pass in a value to the results or whenever we pass an object here into the results we then want to add it to a list so we can create a list here that will store the swimmers that we have. So self.swimmers is equal to just an empty list. Now we can create our um, methods that will actually use the logic to transfer everything over. So what I mean by that is when we want to add a swimmer to this swimmers list, we need some kind of uh, method that will do that. So def add underscore swimmer. And this will take in two parameters, so self and then swimmer. And now we can use the length operator. So with swimming races, just like with running races, it's usually the top three that get a medal. Sometimes you get flags for fourth, fifth and sixth, but first, second and third are the main ones. So what we want to do is just use an if statement. So if the length of self.swimmers, so if this list length, is less than the self dot max underscore swimmers. So if the results have six places and we have seven swimmers, then we will do something. But if we have 
one swimmer and six places, then we will do something else. So if the length of the swimmers is less than the max swimmers total, then we will add the swimmer to the swimmers list. So what we're doing here is we are accessing this self.swimmers list and we are appending this new swimmer that is passed in. And then if that is completed, then we will return true. And then outside of this if statement, we will return false. And that will just be the return false will only return if the uh, if statement is false. So then we will not append to the list and then we will just return false. We could instead print something here saying the total number of swimmers has reached the total number of max swimmers, but for now we just need to return true or false. And now we want to create a third and final um, method and this one will loop through and find out the average time for the swimmers. So if we have three swimmers, we want to know what the average time is between all three. So def get underscore average underscore time and we'll pass in the self parameter. Next, we want to create a value and this will just be zero. We will add to the value through every iteration so that we actually have a running total of all the swimmers times. So then for swimmer in self.swimmers, we want to increment the value by the swimmer's time. So swimmer.getTime. And then we will outside return the round of value divided by the length of the swimmer's so the list of swimmers, and then just to two decimal places. <coughs> Sorry. So now outside of this, we can then instantiate the swimmer class a couple of times so that we have some data. So if we do this four times, so S1 is equal to swimmer, and we'll just call this one Chris, who is 15, and did it in one minute and five seconds. So S2 will be Joe, who is also 15, did it in 106. S3 is for Adam, who's 15 and did it in 108. And then S4 is Tom, also 15 and did it in 103. So now we have four different swimmers and we have four different instantiated objects of this. So I could call s1.getTime and retrieve 105, or I could call s3.getTime and that will return 108. But what we want to do is we want to add these to this results class. So what we want to do is instantiate the results. So we'll have result is equal to results. And this will take in a race name. So we'll say 100 meters freestyle. And this will have um, total number of max swimmers. So for this, we want to use three just because we have four. So we've created four objects, but only three of the objects can get into the first, second or third place. So if I put three here, and then what we can do is just result dot add underscore swimmer, and then we'll pass in S4, result dot add underscore swimmer, and we'll pass in S1, and note that I'm doing these in order. So S4 was the fastest with 103, S1 was second with 105, and then S2 with 106. So we could actually incorporate our own logic here so that we don't need to put them in order and we could output exactly who came first. But for now, this is this is perfect. So result.add underscore swimmer, S2. And now if we were to do result.get average time, and if I save this, 
And now if I head over to my terminal and go to the desktop, and then if I just clear this, so now if I do Python 3 object oriented programming, um, length takes exactly one argument, two given. Right, that's because the two is outside, is inside of that. So the two just needed to be on the other side of the comma. So now if I head back to my terminal and then run, and would help if I just added a print statement around this one. So now when I run this, we get 105. And that is because, well, if we were to then do Python, and then if I did 105 plus 106 plus 103, so then 3.14 divided by three, we get 104, roughly 105. So we have a average time of 105 seconds, which is exactly the same as the first swimmer that we had. So now if I delete this, just so that we have a fresh screen. So one thing that we're gonna have a very, very small look at now is class attributes. And class attributes are a way of having a attribute that is attached to every single instance of the object. So as you saw with this one, we have four different instances of this swimmer. So it would be nice if we were to basically keep track of, or have a way to keep track of how many different objects we have created. So one way to do this, and this is just using, um, just using normal logic, there is an actual way to do this using class methods, and that is something we will come on to in a later part. But for now, to show this using just Python code, what we can do is create a class, so class person, and then if we create a attribute here, or a variable here, and this variable will hold the attribute. So what we want to do is just find out the num of people, and we'll assign that to zero. So we haven't had any instances of this created. So now if I create the constructor method, so underscore underscore init, and then pass in the self parameter and a name parameter, we can then do self dot name is equal to name. And then if I was to just say P1 is equal to person, and then p2 is equal to another person with a different name. So now we can actually access this number of people just by using the dot notation. So I could, for instance, go print p1 dot num of people, and then print p2 dot num of people. And if I save that and then head back over to my terminal, and then if I just exit out of this and then run this, we get two zeros back. And that doesn't really seem to make much sense because what has happened here is we have created two different objects. And what we could do is just print p1 dot, um, p1 dot name. And then if I run this, we should get zero, zero, and Chris. So we do definitely have an object called P1. So why hasn't this zero changed? Well, what we can actually do is we can add to it within the initializing method. So this constructor method is always called whenever an object is created. So whenever this class has been instantiated or turned into an object, we are calling this underscore underscore init method regardless of what parameters are passed in. So what we can actually do now is we can increment the um, number of people per time it's actually um, instantiated. So what we can do is underneath this self.name is equal to name, we can do person.num uh, number of people plus equals one. So now if I save this, and then if I get rid of that line, and 
head over to my terminal and now if I run we get two and that's because we have created two objects and then we are printing the value of the number of people for one and two so the number of people has changed to two so even though the first person will be one because the print statement is after this second instantiation then we will get two and two so now if I delete that and then put that just there we now will get one and two and this is just an easy way of keeping track of the amount of people or the amount of instances of the object that have been created that's all for today's video hopefully this has helped your understanding of how we can use the class keyword to create our own objects that can interact with each other if you liked what we've been through today and you want to learn more please drop a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date. Next, we will be using HTML and CSS to create a front-end design. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.